Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm your host John Lorden and today we're going to be looking into the case of William Tyrrell. I believe it's Tyrrell. Um, I've watched a lot of news coverage on it and I want to say Tyrell because of the Y in there but um, it, it is William Tyrrell according to everything I've heard. This case comes from the Australia area and I know I have a lot of viewers out there you guys reach out to me regularly so I wanted to cover this and hopefully um, you guys can spread the word out there and we can keep the awareness raised on this very important case um, now I did have some brain scratchers suggest this case but what really kind of triggered it for me was a little tweet exchange here um, Libby M new thank you so much um, for pointing out uh, Zoe Palmer is an actress. If you are familiar with the show Dark Matter, she plays the android in that show. If you're not familiar with it and you're a fan of Star Trek and space travel and things like that, you can check it out on Netflix. I highly recommend it. I believe she's also doing a show on the Investigation Discovery Network now. And I was pretty impressed because I bumped into her um, Twitter page and her whole banner is about bringing William home and she does a lot of tweets very regularly about William and um, you know it's one thing to get a star to retweet a, about a missing persons case but it's another thing when they completely wipe out their whole banner and they're participating in um, you know search for William Wednesdays so um, I was moved to bump this story up and we're doing it this week so let's talk about William and what happened here we're going to start on the official whereswilliam.org webpage to just kind of get the basics. Here's some great pictures of this very cute young man. He was only three years old, unfortunately, when he went missing. Little William Tyrell disappeared from his Nana's home on the NSW, um, I believe that's New South Wales, if I remember correctly. Yes, hey, I got it right. Um, New South Wales, and here's a map of the area. This is Kendall, the town in which it happened, which is apparently a very small type of country town. Um, I don't think there's even a thousand residents there. Very small population. He was visiting his grandmother um, on Friday, the 12th of September at 2014, 10.30 a.m. He was three years old at the time and wearing a Spider-Man costume. The, the police believe William could still be alive. He could be anywhere. Now, some details about what happened this day. Um, he was playing in the backyard with his younger sister. His mom was out there with him. As a matter of fact, she took a picture of him uh, literally minutes before he disappeared. Here is the picture. You can see the Spider-Man costume. He's apparently roaring like a lion in this picture, which is why his face is doing that. Um, it's, it was something he liked to do. He liked to play this roaring game uh, with his family. And this backyard is very big. It goes right up against some natural brush area and it kind of wraps around the side of the house. And from what I can see, there is no particular fence that contains any part of it. Um, so his mom was sitting on the back porch with his grandmother. They were talking and she could hear William as he rounded kind of the edge of the house. And then a few minutes later, um, she was calling out to him and she was not getting any reply. She went around the corner. He was nowhere to be seen. They started searching everywhere. They started asking neighbors. Neighbors per uh, participated in it right away. As a matter of fact, um, from what I can tell from what this family did, they did everything absolutely right. They were on the phone with the police within 20 minutes. I, b I believe police were on hand within an hour already searching for him. By that night, they had brought out uh, um, over 200 people to start searching through the brush um, just to make sure that he wasn't, you know, wandering through the woods and being caught somewhere. Um, and this search continued literally, I think, for almost two full weeks where people were searching day after day trying to find this young man. And um, the police at this point are so convinced of the job that they had done in searching the immediate area, searching all those woods. Um, they had divers, they had dogs, they were looking everywhere for this kid and they could not find him. So the investigation has focused now on the possibility that he was abducted. He was literally taken from that side yard at some point. Now there is a bit of a question of 
was someone possibly hiding in the woods, kind of close and watching, and then abducted him and took him down to the street, which was, these are pretty big lots. Um, and the street, there's a lot of windows from the home that face the street. So it would have been a really risky proposition for someone looking to abduct someone. Um, or was he possibly going down to the road to watch for his daddy to come home, which is something that he um, liked to do. He would get a, a sense of when his father was coming home and he'd go out looking for him and try to wait by the driveway and watch for him to drive up. So that's kind of the, the basics of the theory. Um, let's continue here and see what else we can learn. There have been a few, oh, um, before I jump to that, since this case does happen in Australia, um, the phone number and the contact info they have here, I don't know if it will work. It, it shouldn't work from the US without an international country code before it. But if you do, if you are outside of the country and you have some information about this, you can also go to crimestoppers.com.au. And I just wanted to show you real quick. Um, here, it's just a form process that you can go through. You can remain anonymous. You can send in this information. Um, but what I'm really hoping is because I know I have so many viewers in Australia and I want everyone else to think, people that aren't necessarily, necessarily living in Australia, but other brain scratchers, if you have friends that are out there, please, please, please share this message, get this information out to them so that we can get as many eyes and ears on this case as possible. Um, this case is not that old. It's just over a year, you know, a year and four months or so now. Um, and there's kind of a few possibilities that, in my, that run through my mind in terms of what could have happened to him. Um, if he was abducted by someone, is it someone that maybe perhaps couldn't have a child of their own and they're trying to raise him as their own child? Personally, I think that's a best case situation um, in this scenario because at least he would be alive, he'd be being cared for and waiting to be discovered, which is what I truly hope happens with this family. Um, of course, there are other types of predators out there and the investigation has started to focus on pedophilia as being a potential motive for his disappearance. And there's some strange things happening in this, uh, around that a little bit. Um, we're gonna start by talking about one of the suspects here. This is Bill Spedding, who um, is a local repairman, also owns a pawn shop in the area, and had some history of, um, he had a, a case, I believe, in the 80s that was some type of child endangerment case, but I don't believe that he was actually convicted in that case. But uh, it was interesting that he had a bit of a history around this type of issue. So the police investigated him um, and they were public about that, which I found a little bit interesting. I'm not sure why they've been so private about most of this case, but they became public about that. It might be because um, they literally tore up his house as they were investigating him and they might have been worried that the media was going to catch on to it anyway, so maybe that's why they came public with it. Um, he, of course, denies his involvement. He did go to William's grandmother's house to conduct a repair on a washing machine there. Um, apparently, he needed to order another part. This was four days before William went missing. And there is some speculation that I've seen on some news channels that he came, he was supposed to come back that day. And as a matter of fact, I saw an interview with William's mother where she says that um, they were talking about calling him that morning to check on that part and see if it was in yet so they can come and fish the, fix the washer um, because their laundry was backing up like crazy. Um, so he has his own statement about it. We'll just take it right from his lips here. This is a YouTube video he posted. I first attended the Tyrrell house on Tuesday the 9th September 2014 to repair a washing machine. I returned to complete the repair of the washing machine on Thursday the 18th September 2014. It's a bit hard to make it out there, but he's saying that he did come back to complete the repair about a full week later on the 18th. Um, so he insists in this video as it goes on that he was not there any time in between those two dates. He was never there before it. He's never been there since. Um, now, as part of this kind of pedophile ring that the police have been looking into, um, he has a light connection to someone that has over 90 convictions. This guy has a rap sheet a mile long, literally. 
um, who's actually currently in jail. And let's bring up his picture here. That is this man, Anthony Jones. And Anthony Jones has specifically convictions for um, things having to do with kids. He was part of an organization about grandparents that were um, being parents again, that essentially their grandchildren were being given to them to be raised. And other members of this group seem to have some pedophile charges or brushes with the law in regards to that as well. Um, so what's interesting about his piece about this piece of information when we start looking at Anthony Jones is the mother seemed to recall later that there was two cars um, parked out on the on the road and it's kind of strange for this area because as I mentioned this is a country area not a whole lot of residents out there and this street was a cul-de-sac there's literally no reason to go down this street unless you're going to one of those homes um, so what's interesting about this is apparently this man owned a white station wagon which was reported to be one of the vehicles there as a matter of fact they have a mock-up picture here this is from uh, 60 minutes and you can see a white station wagon um, now I'm sure you guys are saying hey John a lot of people have white station wagons well the police were initially told that he um, had gotten rid of that car or that he didn't have it for that period of time and then later they found out he actually gave it to a neighbor so they took it from the neighbor I'm sure they've done forensic testing on it but I have not heard of any results around that um, that being said once again I have to go back to that question about the police coming public with these um, these men in particular and there's two other men but we're not going to jump into them on this episode and coming becoming public with the fact that they're investigating these men. There's something in the back of my head that says they either highly suspect these men of this crime and maybe they can't quite pin it to them yet but they're trying to raise the heat around it by making the public aware of their names um, or potentially they think that these men are guilty of some other crime and they're using this opportunity to once again raise their names and this has rippled through the community a bit um, prior to this people in the community did not know that there was registered sex offenders living in the area apparently there are 20 um, around this town there's one specifically living in this town um, and it has changed the landscape of the feeling of safety that a lot of these residents have um, there, I saw an interview with one mother that was talking about she would let her children play in the front yard all the time or ride their bikes in the road and not have to worry about watching them. And even for me, I remember a much simpler time when you know um, parents could feel safe letting their children play in that way and things are certainly different now uh, in this town of Kendall, which is unfortunate. There has been one or two, well, one particular good thing to come out of it. Um, September 12th, 2015, they had a Walk for William event. Here's a little footage from it. And you can see a lot of people wearing Spider-Man colors, Spider-Man costume pieces. And I believe over 2,000 people showed up to this event. All to raise awareness for William, which is very sweet and um, just yet another reason why I wanted to profile him here on Searchlight and raise that awareness with all of you. Uh, there is some current news that is somewhat related to him, and I just wanted to touch on that before we ended this episode. This is from the Daily Telegraph. William Tyrrell, message left on tree leads to police lockdown. So here's a picture of this tree that says, Jesus saves William Tyrrell. And the last name is misspelled. There's only one R written on this. Now, apparently, uh, here's a picture of what was found below the tree. And this is a geocache. And it's funny because I just bumped into this. Um, a commenter was mentioning on one of my other videos, this sounds like a geocaching thing. And I had to look it up because I didn't even know what it is. But it's essentially a type of game that people play with um, GPS coordinates where you're supposed to investigate certain areas and you will find some type of geocache there. 
I kind of can't make out what's in this actual cache. It looks like maybe there's a bracelet in there, some kind of coin in the bottom of it, a plastic bag with something in it, and some kind of old flashlight or something. Um, but apparently that's part of what they do. They just leave trinkets around for each other. Now, this has caused hundreds, literally hundreds of problems for law enforcement as people are leaving things that some other people think are bombs. Um, they're being called in as these mysterious items and then treated like they're potentially some type of threat to the public. Um, so it's one of those things. Um, as a matter of fact, we have a comment here from James Finger, president of Geocachers, um, specifically for the New South Wales area. Uh, this is an article from news.com.au. His quote is, it's pure coincidence that trunk that was graffitied happened to have a geocache from four years ago hidden beneath. I can't say whether whoever did it found the geocache, but if they did, they didn't log it. There are two million hidden around the world. Bomb scares are one of the hardest things to contain. People see them and don't know what they are. It's not mainstream, but it's getting more so. It's part of the recreational bushwalking landscape. So, at least from the president here, we know that the graffiti on the tree does not appear to be related directly to the geocache that was found there. But as you can imagine, this has to be infuriating for the authorities when they find a message and then something that could be potentially evidence related to that message directly below it. Um, it just seems like it was just an unfortunate coincidence in this case. But this is uh, recent news, literally just within the past month. Um, I wish that there was some better news that was tied more directly to us finding William, but uh, that doesn't appear to be the case yet, but this is where potentially you can help. So once again, I just want to ask all of you awesome Brain Scratch Searchlight fans, please, please, please just take a few moments, think, do I know anyone in this area? And if so, send them this information, send them the link where's william.org it's very very simple to remember send them this episode of searchlight if you want do whatever it takes to get this information out there and keep the awareness raised if this is the first scenario i talked about where he is potentially being raised by someone there is likely other family members that are probably asking big questions like where did this child come from uh, you know, we had these friends, they didn't have a kid, all of a sudden they're coming around and they have a three-year-old. How does that happen? And if they're asking those questions, they need to really get that back to the authorities so that that can be looked into a bit more deeply. Um, I also think that there is great coverage on YouTube. If you search for William Terrell, you will find all kinds of videos about him, tons of tribute videos about him, um, a very good and comprehensive 60 Minutes Australia uh, show on him, and as well as a current affair, which here in the States I don't think we've had for a while, but I was surprised to see it's apparently still alive and kicking in Australia, and they're doing some really good coverage on this case as well. So there's a ton of more information that you guys can check out. As usual, I will have links to all of this in the description box below so you can look into these sources more. And I just have to thank you guys, the Brain Scratch Searchlight community, um, for taking the time, thinking about this, spreading this message, and keeping this awareness raised. And one last shout out, not only to the people that suggested this to me, thank you awesome commenters, but to Zoe Palmer. It just is very inspiring to see um, someone in the entertainment industry use their clout a little bit in such a caring and compassionate manner. And I really appreciate that. So I hope you all have an excellent day. Thanks for spending some time with me and I'll catch you on the next show on the Geek and Dorks channel. Take care.